Considering the success of the Toyota Prius, it's surprising that its plug-in version has gone mostly unnoticed by car shoppers. Now that really raises the question, is the car buying public missing out on something here? Or is the Prius plug-in hybrid just really not that good? It's certainly not the styling that's keeping people away, looking nearly identical to the current Prius liftback. If you're curious how to spot the plug-in version, well, it gets chrome door handles as well as chrome on the front grille and rear hatch. There are also blue accent headlamps and LED taillights. And if you're part of the 99% of the American public that's literate, you'll be able to read the words plug-in hybrid right on the front fender. But don't worry, if you're not, but you still have eyeballs, you'll be able to see right on the passenger side, there's an extra little fuel door there that's actually used to plug the car in. It even appears to be the same under here, with an identical 1.8 liter four-cylinder engine made to Toyota's hybrid Synergy Drive system, except the plug-in hybrid is quite different. For starters, Toyota has finally made the switch from a nickel metal hydride battery pack to a lithium ion one, which is now the industry standard. There's no more power on tap with a sluggish 134 horsepower, but there is a lot more range. Get inside the Prius and there's nothing odd or unfamiliar in here either. You've got the large swath of nothing in front of the driver with all of the controls and information right in the center of the car. But the only things you will notice that are unique is there's a button here on the center console to switch from EV mode to hybrid mode. And on top of that, you've got a few extra new displays up on the top of the dash. For $32,000, you get everything you'd get in the Prius 2 liftback trim, plus some extra stuff from the Prius 3 and 4. Standard equipment is solid with keyless access and a push button start, touch tracer display, a touchscreen display audio system with navigation and a rear backup camera, as well as Toyota's Entune system. The car also comes with heated seats, although the buttons are located way down low, almost on the floor. And one unique item is a charge timer, so you can actually set the vehicle to charge at off-peak hours. While the conventional Prius claims to offer a mile or two of emissions-free travel, uh, that's almost not really true. You have to be going incredibly slowly and be very light on the throttle, so it's pretty much irrelevant. This car, however, gets 15 miles of electric range, and that's at an EPA-rated 87 MPGE, or miles per gallon equivalent. But that's not really the whole story here. What makes the Prius plug-in so special is that you can engage electric mode whenever you want to. Now, there's a good reason for that. Unlike conventional gasoline cars, electric vehicles actually get better fuel economy when you're driving in the city, so it uses its range much better. So that being said, you can start your commute off if you live in suburbia, you can use a little bit of electric range, then you can get out on the highway and just let it revert to its uh, hybrid mode, and then when you get downtown into the city, you can put on electric mode again and really get the most out of those 15 miles. I should point out that if you get too eager on the throttle, even in EV mode, it will kick on the gasoline engine. So if you put your foot right to the floor or if you go just over 60 miles an hour, the gas engine will come on. Personally, I have a rather lengthy commute. I drove over 40 miles each way to get to the Auto Guide offices. Now, that's a long haul, and I can tell you that on the way to the office in this car with it fully charged, I managed to get 63 and a half miles per gallon, which is very impressive. Now, if you have a much shorter distance to go, you will actually improve that number quite a bit. And I suspect that anyone who has a commute somewhere around 20 miles should get somewhere up in the high 80 mile per gallon, just like Toyota claims. In fact, I took a short drive today of maybe just 10 miles and I got 96 miles per gallon using a combination of gas when I was on the highway and electric mode when I was in the city. And here's one of the really important things about the Prius plug-in hybrid, and that's that when you're not using the electric mode, it just reverts to a conventional Prius, which means that even at its worst, you're getting 49 miles per gallon. 
So what are the drawbacks? Well, for starters, there's that range, which is less than half that of the Chevy Volt, a car that gets 38 miles emissions free. On top of all that, I should point out that it's not a great car if you do a lot of short trips, especially in a climate that's not all that warm. And I'll tell you why. I took a short 3.2 mile round trip, and the problem is it was relatively cool out, so what happens is the gas engine wants to come on to warm the car up to temperature no matter what, and it will actually override the EV mode. Now, as a result of that, most of my drive, the gas engine was running, and I only ended up with 35 miles per gallon. The positives do, however, outweigh the negatives, starting with charge time. The car takes a ridiculously short 1.5 hours to charge with a fast charger. But another good point is that it only takes a reasonable three hours with a conventional wall unit, and not one of those high-powered ones either, just a regular old one that you plug a lamp into. Now that's great because you don't have to buy an expensive wall charger or pay to have it installed. You also don't have to pay a bundle to get the Prius PHEV. It costs $32,000 to start. Now, that is $7,800 more than what you'd pay for a conventional Prius liftback similarly equipped. But you're forgetting about the fact that you also get a $2,500 tax rebate, meaning that it's really about $5,300 more than a regular Prius. And because it is in some ways classified as an electric car, you do get to use high occupancy vehicle lanes like those in California. So is it worth the $5,000 premium over a conventional Prius? Well, considering how efficient that car already is, it's gonna to be tough to justify that. Now, if you're more motivated by being green than saving green, then that's really a different question, and it comes with a different answer. Anyone seriously looking at buying this car needs to sit down and do the math. Figure out how long your commute is. Also take a look at whether or not you can plug your vehicle in at your office. And on top of that, look at the upfront cost of what the Prius plug-in hybrid is going to cost you. It might not be as advanced as, say, the Chevrolet Volt, but I have to think that for the majority of drivers out there asking themselves the question, what's the right green machine for me? The best answer? is the Prius plug-in hybrid. For more on this review and others like it, visit autoguide.com.